Hey, Coach, uh, I know you talked a little bit about Haskell uh, on uh, Saturday, but what did you see of his return and his um, kind of determination to get back in the, in the fight? And uh, Coach Combs talked about how he would show up, just go through the mental reps, you know, while he was still all stitched up, et cetera. Well, I think everybody gets a lot of credit for that. Um, I thought that, uh, you know, when the incident happened, our, uh, our medical personnel here uh, were on top of it right from the jump. We were able to get him in with a great surgeon, and uh, the recovery was excellent. And then I, I thought our, our, our people here, Mick Moratti and Larry Johnson, our training staff, uh, did a great job getting him able to play in a game without a ton of contact leading up to the game. So, uh, and, and ultimately, it's, it's you know, a great job by Haskell, getting his body and mind ready to to play well without getting a lot of those reps. So uh, it was a team effort, but at the end of the day, you got to give Haskell the majority of the credit. Thanks. All right, we'll go next to Austin Ward from Letterman Row. Austin. Hey, Ryan. Um, I know that Friday is availability report day, but just in case, you know, no, no matter what happens with Chris Olave, if he couldn't go, what would that mean for you guys? Uh, we just move some things around, um, just like we always do. You know, and, and that's where, you know, depth comes into play. So uh, we'll see as the week goes on how it goes. You were able to get, I mean, we saw the touchdown for Jackson and Julian caught one ball. I think he was out there a little bit. Um, for a debut, and when you guys looked at the film, what did you make of those freshmen? Oh, I thought they, you know, they competed. They, they did what typically they do in practice. I think the big thing for all of them is just the toughness and the phys physicality of playing in a Big Ten football game. Um, and you know protecting and blocking and those type of things and um, I thought they ran good you know some decent routes and um, you know for the most ball most um, you know time caught the ball well so uh, it was good to start off of uh, in terms of you know starting point but you know, we still got a lot of work to do. Thanks. All righty we'll go next to uh, to Dave Biddle from 247 Sports. Dave. Hi Ryan after reviewing the film how do you feel like uh, your running backs played? I thought they were solid. I thought as the game went on, uh, they played better. Uh, same thing just with the run game in general. Um, I think early on, um, it was just okay. That's kind of what happened the first game. So, you know, we're really looking hard to take the next step in game two. And uh, one of the things you just don't get used to is uh, going against those different fronts and, you know, in terms of a scout team, the look just isn't the same. So, um, and, but as the game went on, I thought it got better. Um, and the more, you know, we, we go against, you know, different looks, you know, I think the more comfortable we'll get. And then, you know, the running backs got to continue to get tackled and get a feel for what that's like, keep their pads down, you know, and see the different, you know, cuts that are there. So um, I don't think it was, you know, um, you know, great early on, but I think as it went on, it got better. In 2017, you were here, well, you were in Happy Valley uh, for the, the wideout as Ohio State's offensive coordinator, led the big comeback. Urban said it's like a 10 point difference having no whiteout. Um, you think that's hyperbole from Urban, or, or do you concur with that? Well, I think it's it's that's a really great environment. Um, it's loud. It's it's hard to communicate. So um, it'll be different. It was different here last week, and um, and so yeah, that that part is, is strange. But it's the same for each each team week in and week out. We're all dealing with the same. A set of rules so you know it's just you know how how do we handle it better than our opponent that's just kind of the focus but it certainly will be different thank you okay we'll go next to brendan gulick from buckeyes now on sports illustrated brendan hey coach want to follow up on the uh, running backs question specifically on steel chambers can you tell us what most impressed you about the way that he played in, in his couple of carries yeah i thought he ran hard i thought he saw the, the one on four, uh, third down and opened up i thought the line did a great job there and he finished his run hard um, and I thought he ran with good pad level. You know, it didn't have as many carries, but uh, when he was out there, I thought he flashed a little bit. About the uh, the fact that you're preparing to play your first road game here now, um, can you tell us about your your comfort level with all the logistics and all the things that are going to go into playing on the road here? Yeah, it's, it's very, very different uh, in a lot of areas. You know, just going to the hotel and, um, you know, we have to have protocol in place for, you know, how do we, you know, handle the food? You know, where do we come together when we eat? Um, all those things, you know, um, the, the plane rides, the bus rides, how do we space that out? So it's, it's a lot of stuff. And, uh, you know, Brian Votolini, Quinn Temple, and, 
so many people here are working hard to make sure those logistics are good. But, um, you know, it's our job to make sure we cover all that stuff so the players don't have to worry about it. So there's as few distractions as possible because, like you said, we got to go get our first road win. And it's hard, no matter what happens, it's hard to win uh, in Happy Valley. So uh, we've learned that before. So we'll, uh, we'll work hard to make sure that plan is organized, it runs smoothly, and then the, you know, the players are able to focus on the game. Great, thank you. <clears throat> okay, we'll go next to Stephen Means from Cleveland.com. Stephen. Justin ran it 15 times on Saturday. Were you comfortable with that amount and you know, just how much he got kind of banged up, it's including the sacks that he took? Yeah, I thought he did a great job. Um, you know, most of those runs were scrambles and um, that's about what we do in terms of, um, you know, in the run game, you know, he'll pull it some. And, uh, but a lot, a lot of the, the, the running was, was passes and um, I thought he extended some plays really, really well. And that, that's part of his game. You know, there's going to be sacks, but there's also extended plays for, for huge plays. And that's, um, that's the game uh, for Justin. You know, that was different for Dwayne. It was different for other quarterbacks, but, but for him, you know, for every sack, you're going to get two or three extended plays. Um, you know, there's like three in, in particular. One was a touchdown run. Uh, you know, if you tell him just to throw it away there, he doesn't scramble for a touchdown. So there's a give and take. And, and I think as, as the, you know, the year progressed last year and even in this year, he's doing a good job of it, taking care of the football, making the decision at the right time. And um, I think there are times maybe he can keep his eyes downfield a little longer. But uh, overall, I thought it was, it was a really good game for him. The way the line pass protected. Yeah, I thought they did a really good job. Yeah, I mean, I think some of the routes we had were, were long developing. You know, the, the pass to a Garrett Wilson, I thought the protection was excellent. Um, I thought the running backs did a good job in protection. Um, and uh, so, yeah, overall, I thought it was really good. Um, you know, there's certainly things to clean up and areas we can improve on. But if we can just keep building from there, uh, we'll be in a good place. Okay, we'll go next to Tony Gerdeman from Buckeye Scoop. Tony. Ryan, we got to see one spring practice, and in that practice, Jackson Smith and Jago is making all kinds of plays. And I know uh, you've seen plenty more than that. But what was your thought, I guess, after watching film of his catch, a touchdown? Uh, I mean, not, not like that, but we see that very often in practice. Um, just amazing catches. Uh, we kind of have some acrobats out there. And, um, and so, yeah, when you practice that way, it, it shows up in the games. And so we're very happy to see him get his first touchdown. It was pretty exciting. And along those lines, what's it like for a head coach when you see when that freshman, when that true freshman makes their first big play in Ohio Stadium or in any game? Well, it's exciting, especially when you go through the recruiting process and you spend so much time with he and his family and communication and uh, talking to him about the possibilities of what could happen, uh, playing in the horseshoe, playing in big games, playing in conference plays. And then all of a sudden you see something like that in his first game. It was, it was pretty neat. Thanks. We'll go next to Bill Landis from The Athletic. Bill. Ryan, uh, how much do you think um, rhythm matters for a running back? And, and how difficult might it be to, to get some of that when you're trying to work in two guys the way you guys were on Saturday? No, I mean, I, I see a lot of people do it. We've done it here before. Um, I, I, don't, I don't think that really comes into play. I think um, sometimes you can get a feel for how the game's going. And, um, and then, you know, you can wear people down. And if you can sustain a drive longer, then, then that's um, an advantage. But I think keeping them fresh is really, really good. And, um, and I, I think it has more to do with just, you know, recognizing and seeing, you know, what they're doing on defense and uh, seeing the holes, keeping your pads down. And then, and then once we get you to the second level, it's your job to make that safety miss. You know, um, you know when, when, when the offensive line gets you to the second level or even the third level, um, I mean, that's when you got to go. And it doesn't matter whether you've had, you know, one carry or 50. I mean, uh, you you got to do your job at that point. So, um, as, you know, as long as those guys are getting, you know, multiple carries in the game, multiple carries every other drive, I, I think they feel the flow of the game very, very easily. And, and on the other side of the ball, uh, how did you feel about the way you guys defended the quarterback run, especially now coming into this week where, you know, Sean Clifford's a pretty mobile guy and they do that package with the backup QB too? Yeah, I thought I thought it was solid overall. There was one uh, one or two where they they squirted it out on on the long run by Adrian. Um, the defensive tackle just didn't didn't run the stunt the right way. If he goes left instead of right, um, the play's kind of dead. Um, and so, uh, but that's what that's what team defense is. 
And then those are the things I'm talking about, you know, whether it's in pass protection, whether it's in the run game, whether it's, you know, a stunt here or there, all it takes is one play against a team like Penn state, you lose the game. So we got to clean all those things up this week. And that's where um, I think the difference of the consequence of practice and the consequence of a game have to be felt. And uh, overall, I thought the guys did understand that and embrace it, uh, but we got a lot of things on film to show all it takes is one guy on one play in all three phases and we can lose the game. So, um, you know, to answer your question on the, on the quarterback run, I think it was, it was good, uh, but we're going to get a lot more this week. Hey, we'll go next to Rob Aller from the Columbus Dispatch. Rob. Hey, Ryan. Uh, hey, there's a big difference between a program getting to the top and staying on top. And I know you haven't done this a long time, but what are you seeing as the challenge of staying up there? What are the things you have to do with it day to day? Well, the first thing you got to do is you got to recruit. You got to recruit every day. You got to recruit at a high level. Um, if you don't do that, then that's the first way to get um, your program uh, going sideways. Um, so it's something that we have to do every single day. Um, and then, um, you know, the second thing is everybody's swinging for you. You know, everybody's, uh, you're going to get their best shot week in and week out. And, um, you know, this, this being a strange year and not having a bye week, and we're going to have to bring it every single week. And, um, and, and so you just can't, you can't have a bad day. And then the other part is the expectations, you know, sometimes are just ridiculous. You know, sometimes you know, we win 52 to 17 and some guys are walking around the locker room like, man, what, what happened? I'm like 52 to 17. I mean, it's, it's a pretty good day, boys, you know? And I think, you know, just that part is probably the biggest challenge, but it, those are all good problems to have. And, um, you know, I, I think we're in a good place. We just got to go get this one. This is, this win right here will, will go a long way for us. And so we got to, it's all hands on deck. It's a very, very well coached team. They play well in all three phases. Um, and so, you know, we got our hands full this week. So we got we to gotta make sure that we're on top of our game, having a great week of practice. With the virus, can you calculate, I assume that you've, you can see and feel that you're a little bit behind, as everyone is. Are you two weeks behind? I mean, what, what's your feel, uh, estimate, as to really when you'll be kind of up to snuff running where you want to be? Yeah, I, I think um, we probably have another week to figure that out. You know, um, I think we, we learned some about ourselves in the first game. Uh, but we're, you know, we're at least a couple weeks behind for sure. Um, and, and I think, you know, that's where good teams really improve a lot from week one to week two. And so if we can accelerate this thing this week and have a great week of practice and fix some of the things that we need to get fixed, um, you know, that'll be important in terms of the catch up. All right, we'll go, we'll go next to Dan Hope from 11 Warriors. Dan. Hey, Ryan. You named uh, Chris Booker as your special teams player of the week this week. Just uh, wondering what, it, what he's done as a walk-on to kind of put himself in that position. Uh, what, a, what a tremendous story. I mean, between that and, and the Haskell story this week, uh, you know, Chris Booker's a guy who wasn't playing football. And uh, Tim Hinton, um, you know, met with him. Um, he was on campus. And uh, he was enrolled in school at Ohio State. And uh, two years or a year and a half later, he's, uh, you know, special teams player of, of the week, you know, in a, in a conference win against, against Nebraska. Just a, an unbelievable story. Um, what, what he's done in the weight room with Mick, uh, what Brian Hartline's done in terms of turning the receiver, and then his work on special teams with Matt Barnes. Uh, I can't say enough. Um, you talk about a big heart. He wasn't playing football. You know, I asked him in the team meeting, how many stars were you? He says, zero. I wasn't recruited by anybody. And uh, it just goes to show you when somebody wants something enough and they have a big enough heart, um, anything's possible. And uh, what, what an inspirational story. And that was really, really cool to see. There's been a few guys that have come from the club football program to playing on the varsity team at Ohio State. How do you think that helps to kind of have, you know, another football team on campus? Well, I mean, this is, uh, you know, very, very unique. And uh, our... our walk-on program right now and some of our walk-ons uh, are tremendous. Uh, when you think of some of the guys that are contributing right now, um, there's a lot of walk-ons. You know, Mitch Rossi, Kay Kaczerski, Xavier Johnson, Zade Hamden, uh, Sam Wigless, uh, I mean, Schmiesing. There's a long list of guys who uh, are walk-ons that are really, you know, they're contributing. And that, that really helps a program, especially in a year like this. And I think we're going to see a lot more of those guys get time as, as this season goes on. Thanks, Ryan.
All right, we'll go next to Bill Rabinowitz from the Columbus Dispatch. Bill. Yes, Ryan. Um, were you surprised that Haskell could make that kind of an impact when he has been so limited? And, and what does he bring to that defense? How important is he given the depth issues you have at that position? Um, I'm not surprised because I know what Haskell's uh, capable of, but I am really impressed with the way he played. And again, I, I um, you got to give a lot of credit to everybody involved to get him uh, ready to play at that level after such a traumatic event. Um, so while I wasn't surprised in his ability on the field, um, it was pretty impressive to see that quick turnaround. And, um, and if he can continue that, he can have a major impact on our, on our defense in uh, a position that, you know, we all had our eyes on going into this first game. And that was big. And you touched on this with Rob's question earlier. It's a kind of a cliche in football to say that you improved the most from week one to week two. Given the great off season that you had, how important is it to really make a big jump this week, especially when you're playing a team that's going to be hungry after what happened to them last week. Yeah, I mean they're always going to be hungry when they play us, but certainly, um, you know, when you when when you you know lose a game like that, you know everything's really um, you know everyone just gets a little bit more hungry. And like you said, uh, we got to do a great job this week, and uh, the issues are there, and we got to get them addressed. And that's what that's coaching. Got to get them addressed. Got to get them fixed. And uh, and again, the, the goal is to win the game. It can't be anything else. You know, like I told the guys, um, you know, the last few years here, it's taken to the last play of the game to go win. And that's got to be the expectation. And um, one thing we got to do, we got to do a better job taking care of the football. When you look at the last couple of years, we had too many turnovers, uh, too many fumbles. And we, we've got to, we got to do a good job of that this year. Um, something that is going to be hammered, uh, you know, from, you know, really from Sunday night all the way until, you know, we, we kick the ball off. So, um so anyway, big game. We'll see. But this is a big week of practice for everybody. Thanks, Ryan. Yep. Okay, we'll go next to Doug Lemaris from Cleveland.com. Doug. Hey, Ryan. Um, Garrett playing in the slot in week one. It seemed like you used him. You moved him around, used him in different ways. I know he was outside on his deep touchdown. I think the fourth down play, you had him lined up right next to Ruckert in the slot. Seems like you put the defense a little bit of peril there. Just – can you just talk about utilizing a guy like that, his skills, and deploying him in different ways? And you guys can put pressure on a defense with Garrett from that spot. Yeah, I think the first thing is, you know, having uh, more than one weapon really helps, you know, when you're game planning. But, um, but Garrett really does um, have, um, you know, a lot of versatility into his game. He can play outside. He can play inside. He can, he can play big. He can play in the – uh, you know, quick inside, um, you know, he's got great timing down the field. So, um, yeah, he's got a quite a, quite a skill set. So, yeah, we're going to try to find ways to uh, put him in the most advantageous situation. Um, but, but it's not just him either. You know, we, we have, you know, whether it's Chris or Jameson or Jackson or our tight ends with Ruckert and Luke and, um, you know, there's just a lot of weapons there. And so uh, we got to try to figure out the best way to utilize the personnel that makes the most sense. And, and that's, that's what coaching is. So, um, but yeah, he, um, he was off to a good start. Now he's just got to continue to, you know, keep growing and get stronger as, as the season goes on. And just when you're at a place like Ohio state, you know, you're going to have great offensive skill players every year, but as you're game planning, can you just describe the thought process of this is what we want to do schematically versus this is, these are our particular guys. This is our particular personnel and their skills and how can we best utilize that, that constant balance of scheme versus accentuating players? Yeah, I think it's, it's the way you described it. It's first off what makes the most sense schematically, and then how do you put the players in position to, to utilize their skills best? You know, that's kind of how we do it, you know, not the other way around. Um, you, know, you have to figure out what, what you think is the best way to attack somebody and then, and then plug the guys in that are going to, you know, show their strengths, and, uh, and that's how we do it. And I'm sorry to follow up, just last thing. The yep. thing you mentioned about the balance of big plays versus sacks with Justin, mm -hmm. and that maybe you have to live with a sack because you get three big plays out of it. I remember last year early on with him, you said one of his best plays in a game was throwing the ball away, and that's when he was a young quarterback. What's that evolution been like for you of, of okay, maybe we got to let this guy try to hold on to the ball because we're going to get something good out of it? I, I think if, if you're second and 18, not good. I mean, that, that's a mistake. I think if it's second and 11 and he just got caught, 
not bad. We can live with that, you know, because for every one of those, you know, he, he, we're going to be second and six or second and three because he's going to scramble for seven yards. That's all that hidden yardage that I don't think anybody realizes, you know. Uh, and so, you know, there's times where, you know, if he gets flushed and he's eight yards behind the line, he's got no right taking a sack at that point. I think that's the give and take and figuring out that part of it. Because once you get into, you know, second and 18, you know, there's no good plays there. So um, that's all part of it. And, uh, and, and when, you, when you find yourself in those situations where you're going to take a big, uh, you know, loss, that's when you got to ditch it. So that's the idea. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Here we go next to Kyle Rowland from the Toledo Blade. Kyle. Hey, Ryan. Uh, road teams across college football this year have won at a pretty high rate. Um, I mean, without fans at Big Ten games, do you think home field advantage will be largely neutralized? I don't know. I, I, I can tell you it was different for us. Um, you know, I, I share the story about seven banks, you know, picking the ball up and scoring. You know, the place would have been going absolutely wild, especially during that stretch. You know, we kind of had some momentum going there. Um, it, it, you didn't feel it. It was just like another day of practice. So it is. It, it's different. And I don't know, maybe if it's the momentum swings, um, whatever it is, it, it's different. But – it's different for both teams, and we just got to deal with it. The, the crowd and atmosphere is like the obvious huge difficulty on the road. What are the ele other elements that make road games difficult for teams? Um, you know, it just how are they different? You know, you, you don't stay at home. You know, you once, once you get done, you know, you, you take a plane ride, you're traveling, you're sleeping in a bed that you're not used to. You're a little bit out of your routine that way. Um, but the positive is, you know, it's you're kind of away from, although we're isolated right now anyways, but usually – you know, you kind of get away from everybody. You just kind of get on the bus and you get on the plane and um, you're just with the team. Um, so sometimes that's good. There's, there's a little bit less distractions that way uh, than when you're home. Um, but it's just dealing with that. And then, um, you know, after the game, you know, you, you got to fly and you get it back, you get late at night. Um, but other than that, I mean, it's, it's something you get used to, especially, you know, for the older guys who have been through a lot of games on the road before. Appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Hey, next up is Jared Smalley. Jared. Hi, Ryan. Uh, as you saw Saturday, Penn State lost a game that statistically they should have won and, and maybe won fairly comfortably. Did they look like the team that you kind of envisioned them being? I think they look excellent um, on all three phases. I think they look well coached. Uh, I think they, they're, uh, they have good talent. And um, you know, this is going to be a tough game. Um, a very unique game. Uh, like you said, uh, the score doesn't really tell the tale. And, and watching the film, they have good players on, on all three phases, and they're well coached. So this is going to be a difficult game, and a lot of respect for James and his coaching staff over the years. And um, you know, you got to earn wins against these guys. So uh, it's it's going to be it's going to be you know one of those games where we got to start from the beginning, take care of the football, play really strong, get the game into the fourth quarter, and win it in the fourth quarter. And two places in particular where they had a transition at a position. Uh, defensive end with Parsons not there, and then Journey Brown, the running back, not being available for them. Uh, any any sort of view on how those positions they fared, and and maybe the depth that they had there to move forward? Well, those are two very very good players, and um, you know very unfortunate that you know America and, and the Big Ten aren't able to see those guys play. Um, hate to see that. It's that's not good for our conference, and um, so yeah, anytime you have good players like that, certainly it's, it's felt, but. You know, it's like anything else. You know, you just got to get a rally and move on, which they are doing, and, and they have really good players. They've recruited well. So um, there's other guys that are, that, are, that are playing. But certainly you don't, you don't easily replace good players like that. Yeah, we'll go next to Nathan Baird from Cleveland.com. Nathan. Hey, Ryan, I asked this obviously in light of what's going on at Wisconsin this week, though I assume you probably thought of it earlier. But was there any adjustment made to the way that your quarterback room specifically – congregates or associates um, in terms of trying to, to mitigate any contact tracing problems if something does come up or do you kind of have to just trust the the testing and, and go with go forward with operations as usual uh, we break it up we break it up um, you know when, when they're in the quarterback meeting room with with Corey um, they, they obviously are all masked up and, and distance and they do a great job of that um, but I'll, I'll I'll grab Justin and kind of take him on my own sometimes just to uh, for a lot of reasons, but that's one of them to, to kind of keep them away from, from some of the other guys. Um, but what a tricky situation, you know, it's just very, very, it's a very, very contagious virus. And, you know, I feel for all these teams that are going through this and 
that's where, you know, just keep talking to our guys about it. You know, you just cannot take a deep breath because it, it, once it gets one, one guy, you know, there's a lot of people at risk. And um, so, yeah, it's, it's not easy, but that's, that's something we try to do. And uh, specifically for your defense matching up against Pat Fryermuth, just what problems does he cause maybe, especially for a linebacker group that's still maybe kind of getting its feet under it as it shifts positions. Uh, excellent player, um, you know, mismatch and, and really, uh, can be a mismatch in both areas, the run game and pass game. Very competitive, uh, good ball skills. And um, and so, yeah, he, he can be a mismatch for sure. All righty, next up is Joey Kaufman from the Columbus Dispatch. Joey. Ryan, a little bit of a question about um, recruiting our high school players, but there have been some guys who have opted out of, of their senior seasons across the country. They're just um, for COVID reasons or they're, or they're not having a fall season of some kind. Um, Obviously, different positions probably need the development in, in different ways. But for a quarterback, what, what is the importance of having like a senior season or something like that for their getting a couple games under their development? Because I can't imagine they can go off and train in the same way. No, no, that, that's the thing that is so difficult about football. You can't really practice football other than play it. You can't go, you know, like in, in basketball, you can go shoot hoops or drills or, you know, work kind of one on ones and, or play a pickup game. Um, you know, baseball, you can go and, you know, take batting practice. I mean, just about every sport, but football is different, you know, certainly for a quarterback. Um, you, you just don't get, you, know, you can say seven on seven, seven on seven is unrealistic. I think seven on seven sometimes hurts quarterbacks because they're just not used to playing in the pocket. They start throwing balls that are unrealistic. Um, so playing the game is the number one thing. When you look at the success of the guys who play uh, in the NFL, a lot of them have a lot of game experience under their belt coming out of college and high school playing in the NFL. You know, it just, it's just the truth. And, and a lot of that is because you just, you can't replace experience. So yeah, you know, the more of those guys can play, the better off in terms of their development. You don't worry about their development sometimes? Do I worry about whose development? Just, just in general, like play, like if you're losing a season like this or you're having like a season of four games. And what's the, yeah. the tangible impact of that down the line? Sure, it could. You know, they're going to be a little bit behind. So, you know, you take that into consideration. But, you know, again, it's the same for, for everybody. You know, you got to um, – for these recruits, it's not their fault. So, I mean, they'll, they'll get developed. But, um, but yeah, I mean, obviously they would all want to play, I would assume, as long as it's safe. All right, you got time for a couple more, and we'll uh, start with Tim May from Letterman Road. Tim. Hey, Coach Day, uh, appreciate it. Uh, three quickies. Uh, number one, uh, your backup quarterback situation, is it going to be fluid all year? Is Jack the backup as we speak right now? Just what, what can you enlighten us on there? Yeah, it's, it's an ongoing deal. Um, you know, and if some po if, at some point, if, if one of them jump in front of the other, um, then we'll, we'll go from there. But as of right now, like I said, there's just, they just lack of reps like we just talked about. So they're, they're still battling, they're still learning, they're still trying to figure it out. Um, they're getting better. They're showing, you know, some, some flashes here and there. But, but we'll just keep that going and, and kind of take it week to week. Is your question mark at, at running back now, question as in quandary of who plays, et cetera, is still Chambers now in the, in the thinking now of a top three instead of a top two? Just where, where does that fit? Um, I mean, we're not, we're not changing what we're doing. But, uh, but you know, Steele is certainly capable to get in the game and, um, if it calls for that, we'll, we feel comfortable putting him in there. Yeah, and let's say, you know, Penn State specifically, what do they do defensively? What did you see as you looked at their game against Indiana? Because they were pretty tight against Indiana until really the last two minutes, and there were some miracle plays made uh, to a certain extent. But what just jumps out at you about, the, about their scheme and what they do defensively that makes them special? Uh, personnel, they have really good players. The defensive ends are excellent. And, uh, just, you know, uh, their, their scheme is uh, – you know, just really solid. They, they don't give you big plays. They make you go all the way down the field. And they, they combine, you know, keeping it in front of you and playing a really good zone defense with being aggressive and, and blitzing, you know. And um, you know, those guys really like to, to blitz. Uh, they're really aggressive. And so uh, you, know, you have to be ready for that. you got to be able to handle the pressure uh, or else they'll just keep coming at you. Yeah. Thanks, man. Yep. All righty. And our last questioner for the day will be Chris Mueller from the Pittsburgh Post-Gazette. Chris. Hey, Coach. Um, Marcus Hooker is a local 
product here from Pittsburgh. Um, what did you see from him in his debut um, this week, and how have you seen him kind of grow from year one to year three now with the program? He's grown a lot, maturity-wise, for sure. Um, I, I thought he was solid for the most part after the first drive, and uh, he's only going to grow with more experience. Uh, but uh, it, it's been great to see his development and, um, and the way he's worked, the way he's, uh, you know, got to – really spend quality time with Kerry Combs and, and, and Matt Barnes and, and they've really done a great job with him, but, uh, but he's a, he's an integral part of our defense and he's going to have to be uh, solid for us, you know, just like Jordan was last year. Um, and he's going to be really a direct effect of how good our defense can be. So it was a good start. Um, but, uh, but certainly again, like, you know, we, we all, we all have a lot to look, look at on film and get better at. So a uh, bigger challenge this week. And, um, you know, I think he's going to be up for it. Are there any ways that he compares uh, to his brother Malik, maybe in his approach to practice or his character, or, you know, his work ethic or anything in particular that he does that, you know, you see and you, you think of Malik? Um, you know, listening to some of the guys talk, you know, there are some, um, some characteristics that, that they both share, but I wasn't here with Malik, so I don't really know. But listening to, you know, Kerry and listening to uh, Coach Mick, I, they do have uh, some different characteristics, apparently, that, um, you know, that brothers I typically would have. So, uh, I'm, I'm hoping they have a lot of things in common. <laughs> we'll see as, as the season goes on. Right. Thank you. All right, Coach Day, thank you very much for your time today. Appreciate it. All right, thanks, guys. Have a good day.